A new report from Bank of America's in-house maverick Michael Hartnett is sounding the alarm for investors. Hartnett thinks the Fed and its global central bank lackeys are succeeding at crushing the world economy. And he says history warns the death cross is the last Fed hike which looks increasingly imminent with the world economy now turning over. First up, how we got here. A total of 276 worldwide rate hikes have done a number on the real economy. I recently mentioned how recession has started or close to it in essentially the entire world. Then Hartnett goes back to the 1970s to ask what happened last time. He concludes the magic moment for investors is the very last rate hike. At that point, batten down the hatches because it could be a big one, especially considering that we are coming off 5,000 year lows in interest rates, not a joke, itself a product of no less than 1,343 rate cuts globally since 2008 and $23 trillion of new central bank printing. By the way, Hartnett thinks the break could start in Japan, given they've been draining money so hard it could cascade into a global liquidity event. So why is the last rate hike so bad? Because in contrast to regime fairy tales about wise and omniscient central banks guiding the ship of economy through rough waters, it turns out that the central banks are the rough waters. They are the ones who knock. Because manipulating interest rates sets off an apparently endless series of boom-bust cycles that destroy millions of lives and trillions of wealth every go-round. And the last hike comes in because the Fed's biggest fear during a boom is inflation. It makes voters angry, which makes Congress angry. So they'll only cut during an inflation if they think the economy is headed for a cliff because that also makes voters angry since they have trouble eating. So the inflection is essentially the Fed panicking because of impending recession. Now, so far that hasn't happened because the Fed remains more scared of inflation, partly because the GDP numbers have been holding up thanks to government deficits and government statisticians, and partly because unemployment rates, official unemployment rates, are fortified by millions of people who exited the workforce altogether. Because you only show up as officially unemployed if you are actually looking for work. On the other hand, if you're relaxing on the couch with the Xbox or living under a bridge, you don't count. So the numbers are, to a certain degree, fake. Now, Jerome Powell actually knows that his numbers are wrong. He recently waxed lyrical about navigating by stars on cloudy nights. But so long as media plays along and voters buy it, it keeps Congress on snooze and Jerome can ignore the recession. So what's next? Brought to you by Unchained. What's next is continuing deterioration going by centuries of central bank manipulation of interest rates. Eventually, the jobless numbers start to come up and scare the Fed, and then they start cutting rates, trading some inflation for fewer headlines about food kitchens, trading a rook for a pawn, and praying the media covers for them. Meanwhile, back in the real world, we are lining up for a hit potentially on the scale of the near-death 2008 crisis, which was itself the worst recession since the Great Depression. Toss in today's 1970s-style stagflation, and those cloudy, starred, rough waters could drown millions. Okay, we'll be watching. See you next time.